the psalmist writes, Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We begin our worship this day with the opening hymn, hymn number 350, Come, Thou Precious Ransom, Come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We kneel for confession. The ninth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. We should fear and love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or get it in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. Have I rejoiced with a generous and good heart in the good things that come to my neighbor's? Do I have to keep wishing for and dreaming about things I don't have before I can work with a diligent or a glad heart? Have I lived in grudging discontent with whatever God has given me, restless about what I don't have, and neglectful of thankful generosity with what I do have?
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful man. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, that, that the mountains might quake at your presence. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning more than watchmen for the morning. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day of Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. This is the word of the Lord. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The epistle is from Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who were called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who were loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considers these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, 
for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess the one true Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also on the Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin, and I live for the resurrection and the life of the
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Or Emmanuel. If you're German heritage, it's I. If it's English, it's an E. Of course, Hebrew has no vowels. Now, it is a compilation of Hebrew, a compound word. Imanu, with us. El, God. God with us. It comes from the prophet Isaiah, who tried to assure King Ahaz that he didn't need to strike an alliance with Egypt against the foreign kingdoms of Syria and Ephraim. You see, all he had to do was nothing. Trust in the Lord. In nine short months, the time it takes for a young woman to conceive and bear a son, you will know Emmanuel, God with us. And in less than 12 years, before Emmanuel knows right from wrong, the two kings that you are so concerned about will be dust. They will be obliterated. Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, I know this prophecy in Isaiah means a lot more than the timetable of the Syro-Ephraimite war. But that's what it meant to King Ahaz. But like all prophecies, there's an element of, well, but wait, there is more to come. So 700 years later, that word sign of Emmanuel gets dusted off and the prophecy is fulfilled in a young woman of Nazareth who indeed did conceive a child in her virginity. A biological impossibility, but a divine possibility. And that child, in the most literal of senses, is Emmanuel. God with us. The Word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. So who possibly could have known? To look at this whole family scene, you would have com concluded something entirely different. Imagine your daughter comes home and declares that she is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Or, to put it in context of the Gospel today, your wife comes home with the same story. Your first reaction is likely not, Emmanuel, God with us. No. I can be reasonably certain that it won't be, because we are reasonable people. We know that virgins do not conceive, and I think we've all taken a few basic biology classes. Mary knows this too. She might come from Nazareth, but she's no country bumpkin when it comes to the facts of life. When the angel Gabriel told her that she would conceive and bear a son, the first thing she asks is, how can this be? Mary knew that babies, how babies were conceived, and she knew she was in no position to conceive one, and so she had to ask, how? How is this going to happen? And she doesn't get much of an answer from Gabriel, given that this is certainly one of those huge, life-changing events. You'd think she'd get a little bit more information that, well, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and the glory of the Lord will overshadow you, but that is it. That's all she gets, a word sign, a promise that God is with her and her child is God with us. So now today, we put ourselves in Joseph's sandals. What is he supposed to do? He knows the child isn't his, Yet he is a just and an honorable man. He could have made a public fuss over all this. World tra word travels fast and 
backwater towns like Nazareth, he could have asserted his legal rights and he could have divorced her publicly, putting what is called the gatim, the legal documents of divorce, in her hands and declaring publicly three times, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, in front of three rabbis and other eyewitnesses. And he would have been justified in doing that. But Joseph does not do that. He is an honorable man. He decides to divorce her secretly out of the public eye. He is willing to take criticism to endure the sideway glances from the elders at the gate and the woman at the well, they would think wrongly that Joseph had decided not to go through with the marriage and so kicked Mary out to the curb. Joseph was willing to absorb Mary's shame and to take it on himself. He would be the bad guy. And she would be free to go and marry the rightful father of her child. Who knows? It might even have been bad for his business. Word would get around what Joseph had done to this nice girl who was even pregnant with his child, no less. There would be boycotts at his carpenter's business. His work would slow down. His, his bank account would be depleted, and his name would be ruined. All on account of Emmanuel. Until one night, in a dream, Joseph has this vision of an angel of the Lord who says, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. I don't know what you think of dreams. We, we've all had them, from nice dreams to crazy dreams to evil, horrible dreams. I had a dream last night that somehow I did something very wrong and I was arrested and I was going to go to jail for two years. And just before I woke up this morning, I was plotting how to get out of it. Now, that was my dream. It was real. And I thought, how am I going to psychoanalyze this one? And I thought, well, the biggest thought in the dream was that I was going to spend two years apart from my wife. And I just received news that day earlier that my wife is spending an extended amount of time in Michigan. So that's why I dreamed this separation. You take dreams as they come. The sainted doctor, Professor Marquardt, when asked about do Christians hold on to dreams or what do we believe about dreams, he said, God can use them to prod you, but they are not doctrine. So do not hold your theological premises on them and always test the spirit. Now, for Joseph, however, it was different because he knew that this message in the dream was from God. He received it from God, a vision in a dream. Now, Mary at least got a visible angel who had a name. Joseph, like his dreamer, Old Testament namesake, all he gets is a dream. And that was sufficient for Joseph. He did what the angel commanded him to do. He did it because he trusted in God. That nothing is impossible with God and that God was with him. Emmanuel. God wanted his only begotten son to have a father. An earthly father. Jesus could have gotten by with only a mother. All he needed was the Virgin Mary to be the servant vessel of the Incarnation. But God 
wanted his son to have a father who would provide for him and take care of him in Bethlehem, in Egypt, and in Nazareth. Take him to his work. Take him to the job sites in town. Bring him to the synagogue and to the temple. Provide for him. Protect him. Raise him in the fear of the Lord. And then the Father would give him the name Jesus at his circumcision. The highest and the holiest name ever given among men. Jesus, for he would save his people from their sins. So Joseph, as a son of David, would also give legitimacy to Jesus' claim to the throne of David as the lawful son of David. The naming of the child is the legal document that's determined by the Father for the right lineage. So if Mary is known as the mother of God, then Joseph should be known as the surrogate, stand-in, father of God. Mary experienced the truth of her son, but Joseph has to believe this truth on the thinnest of evidence, the word of an angel in a dream. So here we have Joseph, who is the pattern of a silent faithful father. He never says a word. There's not a single sentence of Joseph ever recorded in Scripture. His actions do all of the speaking, and they speak volumes of faithfulness. Now you have to suspect that there were doubts in Joseph's mind can this really be so? Can a young woman, my wife, conceive in her virginity? So many couples have difficulties conceiving in the usual way. And this one conceives entirely on her own, without a man. Woman's offspring, pure and fresh. Or is he? How can it be? Did Joseph lie awake at night and think of his wife, his bride, Mary, sleeping soundly and wondering? In the Eastern iconography of the Nativity, they always put Joseph way off in the corner, wrapped up in doubt with the devil whispering in one of his ears. He had to doubt. Who would have blamed him? Now, curiously, Joseph disappears from the pages of the Gospel after the incident in the temple when Jesus was 12 years old. He is never mentioned in John's Gospel. And perhaps after the temple incident, he dies shortly thereafter. Now that Jesus now that Jesus had arrived into manhood, he no longer needed his father's surrogate. Perhaps Jesus took care of his mother for much of his young adult life, making that scene at the cross where he entrusts her to John all the more poignant. There is so much that we do not know. There is so much that we would like to know the Christmas story and those iconic nativity scenes have such sharp angles and edges. It's an uncomfortable story at many levels, a story of lives turned upside down by the simple fact that when Emmanuel shows up, your lives will never ever be the same again. So if you have a nativity scene as part of your Christmas decorations, pay particular attention to Joseph today. He always kind of gets passed over. Now our focus, rightly so, should be on the divine 
Christ child in the manger. And then there's the mother, naturally. And there's shepherds and the angels and later the wise men from the east. The story is certainly rich in characters and they all have their place and purpose. But we tend to forget about this silent, faithful man who heard the word of God and he did what he was told to do. Some people never know quite where to put Joseph in the manger scene. Some people put him behind Mary, gazing over her shoulder, signifying the greatest supportive role there ever was in the history of the world. Some people I know put him opposite of Mary with the child in the manger in the middle because if ever a child got between the husband and the wife, this child did. So with these few days left in Advent, spend a little Joseph time. Ponder in your own hearts the doubts that you might have the inconveniences and the changes of plans that Emmanuel has brought into your life and what your own place and what your own purpose is in the greatest story of salvation that centers on this child, Emmanuel, God with us. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. An old, dusty prophecy first spoken to an evil king who was more worried about national security than anything any prophet had to say comes to its finest and its fullest meaning here in the womb of Mary and in the heart of Joseph. A virgin conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit not simply against all odds, but in spite of its impossibility. Even all the biologists must bow their head and bend their knees at this awe and this wonder, the mystery of Emmanuel, God with us. Do you know, and I think you do, that God is always with us? You see, without God, there is nothing. God does not create by remote control, but by being present with his word in and with and under all things, calling them into being, holding them in existence. Were God to withdraw his presence from anything, that thing would cease to be as though it never was. But Emmanuel means something more than God being really present. It means God is present to save, to rescue, to redeem and raise up. That was the message to King Ahaz at the aqueduct. Stop what you are doing and trust in the Lord. Stop trying to be the master of your own destiny and rely solely on the power of God to save you. Be still and know that God is God for you. This baby in the womb of Mary is no stranger, no alien life form. He is the word who made us, the Word who holds us and all things in existence, the Word that came to be with us in the most personal and intimate of ways to embrace our humanity in His humanity from cradle to grave, from womb to the tomb. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is with us in baptismal water, the spoken word, in Eucharistic bread and wine, 
He is with us to free us, to forgive us, to raise us, to restore us. And we, like Mary and Joseph, we receive him for who he is. Emmanuel, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. In his name we pray. Amen. At this time, we have the confirmation of four adults into our fellowship. I'd like to have them come forward. That would be Gail and Craig and Heidi and Dolores. If you will come up here, please. I think I'll have you in order here, Gail, and then Craig, and then Heidi, and then Dolores. If the congregation would like to open your hymnals to page 272, you may follow along with us in this confirmation rite. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord?
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Gail Scheiderer Anglin, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Gail, your Bible verse is Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? The faith that saves lives in the light of Christ and his cross. Faith will honor God by standing firm in his strength to overcome all things. Craig Robert Beaverson, your Bible verse is John 6.35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The faith that saves feeds on the body and blood of Christ for forgiveness and life. Faith will honor God in a worship centered in God's grace in word and sacrament. Heidi Marie Lanning, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your Bible verse is Revelation 2, verse 10. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The faith that saves receives by grace the crown of eternal life. Faith will honor God in all things, even unto death. And Dolores Gaynell Redenis, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your Bible verse is Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who were called according to his purpose. The faith that saves trusts God for all matters of salvation and life. Faith will honor God in the confidence 
that suffering is the way before glory. Let us rise for prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance, with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. Strengthen them to believe in no satisfaction for sin, but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor, and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. It is wonderful to add you to the fellowship of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and to our fellowship here at Ascension, and we welcome you to our communion rail, and what a blessing it is that the body of Christ continues to grow here. God's peace be with you. You may return to your seats.
Beloved in the Lord, let us pray. Lord God, you promised the virgin-born son to reluctant king Ahaz, and in the fullness of time the word became flesh. Open our hearts and strengthen our faith gladly to receive your son in the signs where he is present, not in signs of our own choosing, but in the holy word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, preserve your apostolic gospel and its ministers. Cause the name and the resurrection of Christ Jesus to be proclaimed among all the nations, including among us who are called to belong to him that the obedience of faith may be brought about in every place. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, it is your will that we live chaste and decent lives in all that we say and do. Preserve all couples who are engaged to be married in faithfulness and honor, that they may come to their wedding day without fear, shame, or disgrace. Since Christ is Emmanuel, who saves his people from their sins, clothe all brides and grooms in the forgiveness of Jesus, in which all can stand before you cleansed and confident of your blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you do not bear with the tiresome flattery and unbelief of kings and rulers forever. Have mercy on us, Lord, and spare our great nation. Clear away all empty shows of piety and renew genuine faith in the Virgin's Son that his coming at the last may not be a sign against us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you named your Son Jesus because he was born to save us from our sins. Give us repentant hearts. Do not let us bow to temptation or abuse his name by seeking our own way but lead us to confess our sins and to rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, look with kindness on the sick and those in any need and bring them relief. This day we pray for the family of Reverend Paul Spira, who has just recently passed. We pray for those who continue to be sick. We pray for Scott Staub, and Tony Marquardt, and Walt Limer, and Austin Ely. We pray for Darlene Roosh, and Pam Springer, Eric Daly, and Joan Hopkins, Pastor Stuby, and Sandy Rivas. For Paul Gunsett, Patty Hunter, and Marvin Hinkle. For Evelyn Herrick, and Judy Tomes. For Linda Limer, and Dave Narwald. Ben Bush, James, and Holly Parker. Lexi Anders and Trudy Baining, for Reverend Richard Boland, Norm Sprague, Sherry Nord, and Barbara Johnston, and also Reverend Jerry Moore, Judy Walker, Lisa Yokolet, Reverend Double D, and Linda Crone. And we pray for all those who so lovingly, graciously, and mercifully care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is truly Lord and ruler of the house of Israel. With the Holy Spirit, you spoke to Moses out of the burning bush and gave the law in terror to test your ancient people, that the fear of you would be before them. As Moses stretched out his arm at your word to bring Israel out of bondage, and as he stood in the breach against your wrath, so you have given Christ to redeem us with his arms outstretched on the wood of the cross. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. For you live and reign ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your 
Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory, Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless with the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Good morning. And what a great day it is to receive God's word and sacrament, to be blessed with his grace and mercy and life, and also to receive new members into our fellowship. In the earlier service, we received the Bueller family, Buckley and Pamela and Joseph and James. And in this service, we received Gail and Craig and Heidi and Dolores as new members here at Ascension and communing with us now. What a blessing that is that God continues to grow his church and his kingdom here at Ascension. A reminder that if you haven't already, we have a cookie walk going on, and I believe after the service is another time that you can go and pick your cookies and, and get your Christmas uh, goodies in proper order and, and ready to serve to your guests this Christmas, and know that it's also part of a fundraiser we have going on here and part of a tradition at Ascension. Also, if you have not picked up your offering envelopes as of yet, they are in the church office, so please do so, so that we can make sure that you have everything you need in your graciousness towards God's church. Tomorrow evening at the home of Jolene Mays, there will be, well, a Mary Martha Christmas gathering for all you ladies. So if you have opportunity to go, I'm sure they would love to have you with them. And for the ninth through 12th graders in our youth, there is a Higher Things retreat coming up in January, and you were invited to attend that. So be sure that you read the announcements and get all the, uh, all the information for that gathering. Later today at 4 o'clock, we will have our Christmas program with our children, and we certainly would love to have all you back for that particular program and service in which our children will sing and they'll speak to us the Christmas story. And we're grateful for all our teachers and everyone who's been working with them, the music directors. Uh, what a wonderful job they have done with our youth. And uh, you'll have a chance to see it again this evening. Coming up next Sunday, our worship time will be, well, actually Christmas Eve. Well, actually, we'll even go to Wednesday. There's no service on Wednesday. So be sure that you don't show up here. And if you do, well then uh, fellowship with whoever else showed up with you and have a good time. But there's no service here on Wednesday. Christmas Eve on Saturday is at 6.30, Christmas morning at 9 a.m., and there's no Bible class, just one service. And we'll repeat that the following week on New Year's morning, on Sunday morning, one service at 9 a.m., and then we have an Epiphany service on January 5th at 6.30. That's a Thursday evening here. It's Epiphany Eve, and then we'll go back into our normal routine of services with the baptism of Jesus on January 8th, and both services and Bible class resume again. So with all of that, make sure that you look at the announcements for this week, make sure of the schedule, and also the other opportunities I've mentioned here. Hopefully, I haven't forgotten anything, so I'm going to ask Pastor Zeroff, because he reminded me of a lot of this last service. But please be sure to, uh, to come back to the cookie walk and look at all the delectable delights that are there for you to participate in. <laughs> 